Welcome back, DPV TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here. Hey, and it's the other one, Jordan Drake. And Chris, it's the holiday season yeah. is fast approaching. That's where we see a lot of like buyer's guides on DP Review. We're gonna be doing a bunch of like camera comparisons, best camera for a specific type of photographer. Mm. But we really thought, you know what, that's all brand new exciting stuff we generally look at, but you can get some smoking deals if you're willing to look at the used market. Absolutely, we've seen so many camera launches right now, and actually, a lot of people are saying, well, what I like about that is the older cameras will hopefully come down in price. Exactly. And if you're looking for gifts, you know, for yourself or loved ones, it is a great opportunity to get something used. Now, with used, you're not always gonna get the latest and greatest technology, but that's not what it's about. It's about getting a really good experience. That's why even something like, like an old D700 could be a great buy. But, I mean, we both kind of think, if you're gonna invest, mirrorless is probably the best way to do it. Yes. So you've got new lenses coming out and stuff like that. So our idea with this is we went on KEH. Yeah, we're not sponsored by KEH, but we just think it's a good standard for pricing. Yeah. But we will mention if we can find better pricing out there. And these are our picks. This isn't, you know, like what we think is the best of, of rated used cameras. This is what we personally like ourselves. Yeah, and the things that we think are like really good deals at mm. this point. So obviously Chris is gonna talk about the photo cameras primarily, yep. and I'm gonna look at things that are very capable for video as well. But why don't you kick it off with the photo cameras? Let's do it. So this is how this is gonna work. Jordan and I are gonna talk about some smaller sensor cameras first because typically they do have lower price points. And then we're gonna mention full frame options which do typically have a higher price point but might be an option that you really want. So for me, for photo, the first camera that I really looked at was the Fujifilm XS10. If you've seen our reviews, I really do love this camera. Uh, I think it's a great combination of having in-body image stabilization and nice controls. The main issue though I had with it used was you could still buy it new and the used pricing, it's just really not that good a deal compared to new. So my actual pick is an APS-C camera. It's the Canon EOS M6 Mark II. Now on KEH, the price is decently low, but I have been able to find it for quite a bit lower online and other places. And I think it's a solid camera. It was a fast shooter, great modern autofocusing and mirrorless, high resolution sensor. I mean, it really had it all and it was so light and compact. Another one that jumped out at me was actually another Fuji film. Uh, it's the X-T3, and this has the Eterna profile that I love. It's capable of shooting log, has a headphone jack, and it's actually a little bit less expensive than the X-S10 that you mentioned, even though it's you know technically a higher end body, really nice handling on that. And if you do want to do a little bit of photography, I'd say it's a much more enjoyable camera to use as long as you can get away with you know, not having the in-body image stabilization. Keep it on a tripod. But my actual pick, if you want great stabilization, I found an absolutely screaming deal on an EM-1 Mark II. And remember, the EM-1 Mark III came out a little while later and was not a huge upgrade if you were planning to shoot video. Most of the upgrades there were for photo features. So an EM-1 II gets you one of the most stable cameras. If you want to just shoot handheld, the IBIS in it is incredibly effective. There's a lot of great, very affordable lenses for it. And honestly, it's costing less than, you know, a lot of mid-range lenses. So even if you have another camera, system already, just grab an EM-1 II and like a wide prime and you've got a perfect walking around video setup as well. I think this is a great way to go. Okay, so now let's talk about our full frame photo options. So the Nikon D800, I love that camera. It's come down a lot in brow, oh, but that's an SLR. Okay, so let's stick to mirrorless. On the topic of Nikon then, the Nikon Z6, the first version, great option, pretty good price point. The Nikon Z7 with that excellent 45 megapixel sensor, that could be a great option as well, but Really, it's a no-brainer. It is the Sony a7R III. The fact of the matter is that price point has dropped so much. It's more affordable than an Icon Z7, has an excellent 42 and a half megapixel sensor, and the price is great because now we have the a7R III-A, which just had a slightly better screen, the a7R IV, now the a7R V. That's all depressed the price of the a7R III original further. Not only do you have a great price on the body, but you're also buying into a lens mode that has so much third-party lens support, so many affordable options that will support that high-resolution sensor. Not only do you save on the body, but you save on the lenses as well, and that makes that package a steal. It's a great option, not a very good video camera though, so we won't have too much overlapping with our choices here. And one that really stood out for me, you already mentioned it, is the Nikon Z6 Original is a great price right now. Now, unfortunately, to get the most out of that, you do need an external recorder, so if you've got one already, great option, but if you're looking for the absolute best value, the thing that really stood out to me is the Panasonic S1. And you have to remember when this first came out, a lot of the features of it were kind of scaled back, but they've done a huge number of firmware updates and it's very similar now to an S1H, one of my favorite video cameras ever made. 
As well, there weren't a lot of lens options when this first came out, but over the last little while, Panasonic and Sigma have just been expanding the line of affordable glass in the L mount, so you can get a very complete setup for a very affordable price. I think the S1 is a great option if you're looking to save some money. All right, so thanks for joining us on our adventure into the world of used cameras. An adventure and... where we didn't go anywhere or do anything. <laughs> no, it's so cold outside. But you know, we can only cover so many things and these are our personal opinions. So, you know, definitely leave your choices for what you think is a great used deal in the comments below. That'd be very useful for the other people watching. And you know, I mean, just remember these cameras that we thought were excellent just a few years ago, they're still excellent today, right? So buy some, get some as a gift, get one for yourself, bring new life into these old cameras. That's what they're meant to do, take pictures and be used. Absolutely. I think we should mention that uh, subscribing is the best thing that you can do to support yeah. our channel. And uh, you can also, down at the bottom there, there's like our social media things, you yes, know, Twitter, as long as that's still going, Instagram Absolutely. is great too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks so much for joining us and uh, we'll see you guys soon for another episode of Deep Review TV. Bye.